In this tutorial, we're going to look at Google Slides. So how to create a slideshow using your Google Drive account. And to do this, you just go to your Google Drive account. If you are not familiar with Google Drive, please watch my other videos on Google Drive. But basically, all you do once you're in your Google Drive is you click on New and then go down and select Google Slides. Now, if I just click here where it says Google Slides, it will create a blank Google Slides document that I can go in and work on. However, if I go over here to the right, look, it gives me a couple of options. I can create a Google Slides blank presentation, which is pretty much the same as clicking here, or I can click on from a template. So let's quickly look at from a template and then we'll go in to blank presentation. So here's what it looks like when you choose from a template. It gives you some options of pre-made templates that you can basically copy and use. You can see here's one called general presentation, just kind of your basic presentation, but a little different than starting just from scratch. Here's one that focuses on one big idea. Here's one that's a photo album, and you can go in and change the photos that are in there as placeholders. Here's one that's set up to be a yearbook, a recipe showcase. So these are some kind of fun templates that you can get and just click on it if you want to use it let's say the yearbook I could just click on that and it opens it up in Google Slides so that I can edit it use it put my own pictures in there and create a yearbook so that's a nice feature to have however I'm gonna X out of it and go back and this time I'll create a Google Slides presentation just from scratch from a blank presentation and it opens up a screen that should remind you of PowerPoint. If you've used PowerPoint at all, especially the older versions of PowerPoint, 2003 and before, this is pretty similar to that. But it's also got some nice new features that that old version of PowerPoint didn't have. So what we have here is we have a list of slides here at the left. Right now, there's just the one. And this is a thumbnail. If you click on the thumbnail, it gives you the bigger version of the slide. And in this case, because there is only one, that's what I see in front of me. Across the top, we have some menus and we have some tools that we can use. On the right side, there's a panel or a pane that opens up. And in this case, the pane shows me themes that I can choose from. So we'll look at that in just a second. But first, I'm just gonna follow the instructions that are in front of me. Click to add title. So I click there. I put in the title of my presentation, which is gonna be Spanish Animal Vocabulary. And then I can click to add a subtitle. And so I am done now with my first slide. The thing is though, it's just black and white. It's very plain. If I go over here to the right, I can choose a theme that will spice this up a little bit and make it look a lot nicer. So very often that's what I do. I put in the title, I put in the subtitle if I want one, and then I click through and find the template that matches the feel that I want to have for my presentation. Now if you don't find any there that you want, you could create your own. You could just put in a background color or use a photo as a background. You could also import a theme there at the bottom of the screen. But for this presentation, I'm just gonna stick with this particular theme called Tropic. Now that I've chosen that theme, every slide that I create should have that same theme. So I'm gonna click here on the plus sign to get a new slide. It adds it to my list of slides. Now I could have just right clicked in this blank area and clicked new slide. That's another way to create a new slide. And now I can go ahead and just click to add the title of this slide. And let's say I wanna start with talking about mammals in Spanish, and then I can just click to go in and put a few mammals in there. So I can just type these in. Now typically in PowerPoint, these would come in bulleted. And if you want that, you can just highlight them, go up here to the top of the screen, and activate bulleted list. We also have a numbered list, and you'll also find most of the same options that you're used to having in PowerPoint, as far as like font styles, font sizes, bold, italics, underline, stuff like that. There's also some nice visual tools, like you can insert shapes, arrows, callouts, and equations, and a bunch of other drawing tools. If you're interested in learning more about those drawing tools and the shapes, please watch my other video on Google Drawings because it's the same basic functionality, but it's built right in to Google Slides. So check that out. You can also add text boxes anytime you want. Just click on the text box button and then click on the screen and you can type and you may need to change the font color, etc. Okay, so I can go up here and I can change that color of the text and I can put that wherever I want it to be. 
Now let's look also at adding images because in Google Slides, if you're just using text, you're really missing out on the power of the tool. So I'm gonna go up here to insert and choose image and take a look at all the different options I have for inserting an image into my slide. The most basic, I guess, is this. Upload an image from your computer. You can also click and drag and drop an image here in this box. A lot of times I find it just to be easier to click choose an image to upload. And then I could go to my desktop, double click on photos, and then I could upload an image, let's say, of a tiger. Okay, and that pulls the image into my Google Slides presentation. I can then resize it if I need to and move it where I need it to be. Now, once the image is in my Google Slides presentation, I can go up here with it selected and I can click Image Options to do a bunch of different things to this image. Recolor it, I can make it more transparent, I can make it brighter, contrast. I'm not very happy with my results here, so I'm gonna click Reset Adjustments and change it back to No Recolor. But you do have those options if you would like them. Really quickly, I want to show you the other image options you can take a snapshot using the camera on your computer if you have one. You can import images by URL. So if you know the internet address of your photo, just copy paste it in there and it will pull it in. You can also access your albums that are in your Google Photos account, or you can tap into Google Drive and see any images that you've created or that you have stored there. But probably my favorite option for inserting an image is just clicking here where it says search and I can do a search for the pictures that I need. Okay, so I need a picture of a cow, beautiful picture right there. Okay, so I click on it, I add it in, shrink it down to the size I want it to be, and arrange it on the screen. Now, just one little tip, if I do a search for cow.png, I'll usually get a little bit different result. Take a look at the difference. This cow.png comes in without the rectangular background. And so I'm not saying that this is superior, but I think it is sometimes cool to have an image that doesn't have that rectangular background. So try that out. And of course I could also do a search for a dog and a cat and uh, put those into the presentation. Because I don't want this picture anymore, I just click on it, tap delete. I don't really need the tiger either. Give me a second to add a picture of a dog and a cat, and then I'll continue. Okay, so I've added additional pictures and I've arranged them on the screen. Now let's look at how I could animate these so that they come in one at a time. To do that in Google Slides, I would need to go here to insert and then choose animation. Next, I would select an object to animate. So this cow, I want to appear only at a certain time. So now that I've selected the object, I click here on select an object to animate. It can see that I'm wanting to animate the cow. And notice that it's set to fade in. That's the animation that's gonna happen. If I wanna change that, I could have it zoom in, I could have it spin, or whatever I want it to do out of this list. And then you have to decide what is it that makes it fade in. Is it just on click? And that's what I'm gonna do. Or do I want it to happen with the previous animation? In this case, there isn't a previous animation, at least on the slide. So I'm just gonna go with on click. Next, I click on the dog, select to animate, fade in, on click, or I could say with previous or after previous. So I have some options here. Now, another way to do this is instead of animating one at a time, I can just click to select each of these. I'm holding shift and clicking to select each of those. Now, in some cases, you can hold control and do that, but in this case, I'm holding shift and clicking to select all of them. And then I click select an object to animate and it highlights all of them. Now it highlighted them and put them in the wrong order. So I'm just gonna click and drag to put the cow at the top and I want it to fade in with a click. Then I want the dog to fade in on click and the cat to fade in on a click. Notice that you can also make them fade in fast, medium, or slow. But at this point, I think I'm ready. I think it's pretty much the way I want it to be. I might want to go in and make these words separate a little bit just by clicking, hitting enter, and then delete or backspace. So that separates it out just a little bit. But this is pretty much what I was hoping for. So let's look at the finished product. I'm going to go up here to the upper right where it says present. There's my opening slide. I advance the slide by hitting the right arrow or spacebar or enter. And as you can see, as you advance the presentation, the animations appear. So it's pretty good. I like this presentation so far. Now, of course, I could continue to add new slides and adding more animals to the presentation and go from there.
So those are the basics that you need to know to get started using Google Slides. However, I do want to point out a couple of advantages that we have because we're using Google Slides instead of PowerPoint, even though I love PowerPoint, or Keynote, even though I love Keynote, there are a couple of advantages to using Google Slides. And one of them is it really makes it easy to share this presentation with others. When you click share, it makes you name your presentation, and I wanna name it just the same as my opening slide. Google figured that out, and so I can just click save, and now it is titled the same as my opening slide. Next, I can enter the names of people with which I want to share this presentation. And look what it has, it has a pencil here, meaning that whoever I share this with will be able to edit the presentation and help me build it. If you don't want that, if you only want them to be able to see the presentation or comment on it, you can change that here. There's also an option to go into advanced, and when you click advanced, it gives you a shareable link that you can copy, send to people. Whoever gets that will be able to do some things with your presentation. You can also invite them through email, Facebook, Twitter, etc. Now, right now it says private, only I can access, but I can click change and make this so that anyone with the link is gonna be able to do this, view it in this case but I wanna change that to edit. So now anyone with the link can edit this presentation. You can also change it so that it's only editable or shareable with specific people that I invite by putting their email address in there on the previous screen, or I could make it completely public on the web. Anyone could find and edit it, or if you don't think that's a good idea, you can say that anyone can find it and view it. So these options are just really nice for sharing your Google Slides presentations. I'm gonna click done at this point. So the other thing I wanted to show you that's an advantage to Google Slides is that if you're using Google Chrome, you can go to the Chrome Web Store and you can do searches for certain tools such as Pull Everywhere. And if you add Pull Everywhere to your Google Chrome account, it will add a special tool into your Google Slides so that you have an additional menu here. And this is just one example of several that are out there. But I can now click here where it says Poll Everywhere and I can create a new poll for my audience to participate with and interact with as they watch my slides presentation. I can also insert a poll that I've already made and it taps into my Pull Everywhere account, and I can just choose one of these questions, and it will pull it in, and I can insert it. If you're not familiar with Pull Everywhere, please watch my other video on Pull Everywhere, but this is really an exciting ability that I have because I'm using Google Slides, and so that's one of the reasons that I often prefer Google Slides. Not always, but often. It's because of these additional tools that I can find here in the Chrome Web Store, and I can find those extensions, in this case, and add them to Chrome. If you want to learn more about extensions, please watch my video on Chrome Web Extensions and Apps. So thanks for watching this tutorial on Google Slides. I hope you enjoy using it. Please consider connecting with me on my social media websites like Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. And please do subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students, and watch for a new video at least every Monday.